Okay, I'm going to show you how the Revolt system works here. In order to get batteries to test on, I was running ads on Craigslist. I was buying them for $10 a piece in any condition. So people were bringing them to me from uh, sources as fresh as their car to sitting out in their yard for 10 years or more. I tried to restrict what I took in to being at least 10 years or younger, uh, not having any cracks or leaks because that's usually a sign that you're defeated before you can even get started. So the first thing to remember is to have some protective rubber gloves when you're handling these because in, in any kind of condition they could be leaky even though that uh, I tried to screen for that. So this is uh, one of the batteries I took in a few weeks ago that I've not had a chance to look at yet. And I'm looking for a date sticker on it just to get an idea of about how old it is. I don't see one, which is pretty common on a lot of these older junk batteries. Those stickers fall off. Um, feels like it weighs about 28 to 30 pounds. That's kind of relevant because when we set the power level on the Revolt, we do it based on the weight of the battery. Uh, this is also a post style, so I'm going to just throw some bolts into it so I can attach to it. But before I do that, I am gonna go ahead and put it up on the stand and get it all set up so it's ready to go. This is a sheet that I fill out for each of these batteries when they come in. Uh, I assign a control number to them get some information on them, get the dimensions, because oftentimes they come in so bad with no labels on them, there's no model number. So I usually go by dimensions when people are trying to size them up. Uh, whether they're auto, marine, the post style side, the post uh, position for the positive terminal, and there's your length and width. And then here I collect the data on them as they go through the cycles. Initially, I check their voltage and then when they're loaded, what their uh, voltage is and record it there. Then we can see the progress as we go through it or lack of progress if it's a hopeless case. So now I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the battery. Okay, I've put the Everstart uh, test battery in my rack here. And this rack is built of two by 12 planks, four six foot two by 12 planks, more than adequate for holding about 20 or so uh, automotive size batteries. And uh, it's the rack system that I've used for testing all the batteries in the past. It's uh, quite sturdy. It's got some of the older models on it still functioning along with a fast charger. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and run this battery now. The first thing I do is I put it on the load tester to see what the status of the battery is. Since it's a side post, I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of bolts in it to grab onto those terminals with, with clamps. And the tester is just a regular automotive load tester. It puts about the same current load on a battery as a car starter does. Now we can see unloaded, it's reading about five and a half volts. It's pretty dead and loaded down, it's reading less than one. So it's, it's a pretty, pretty dead situation here. Not unexpected considering the condition it came in. in. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we know it weighs about 30 pounds so we're going to go ahead and set one click for every three pounds on the power level here which is going to take that to 10 and these are the rejuvenation leads uh, there's also the regular no fault charging leads which we use to maintain or just charge batteries regularly that are having difficulty charging on other chargers go ahead and hook these up and uh, we're going to run this for four hours so I'll set the timer for three, four hours and turn it on with the power level at zero. I'm sure there's no problem. Notice the absorption indicator is off. And depending on the condition of the battery, sometimes you'll get absorption. Sometimes it'll take a little while before it starts absorbing. I'm going to start increasing the power level here or we got absorption immediately. Mm 
going to take it to five right now since we have absorption immediately we might have some shorts in the cell that's holding it from coming up to voltage so I'll come back in a little while and uh, see if it's moving up a little farther then I'll go ahead and move it up to 10 Okay, it's been about 30 minutes now. We've set the power level at half because absorption came on so quickly. And we do that because if the battery is too badly shorted out, then uh, uh, there's nothing the unit can do about it. It will shut itself off if there's a problem. So uh, the unit hasn't shut off. It's been a little over a half hour now. I'm gonna go ahead and take a voltage reading on the battery and see what it's up to and if it's above half its voltage we'll go ahead and push the power level all the way up like we were supposed to. Well look at that it's at uh, 13 volts now so uh, it's already come back quite a bit and uh, we'll go ahead and Push the power level on up to the rest of the way then. And we'll go ahead and let the clock run out. It was on there. Uh, it's Like I said, it's run about a half hour now, so it's got five and a half hours to go. And uh, then we'll come back and load test it. One thing to keep in mind here, you see the sparks fly, but the revolt is intrinsically safe. You notice I'm touching both leads here on full power level here, no problem. Now I wouldn't want to do this with wet hands, but you wouldn't want to do that with a car battery either. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's a much safer operation. A lot of units have a pulsing technique that generates a very high voltage right at the leads and that's dangerous, you don't want to touch that. So we'll let it go now. All right, well, here we are back at the battery after it's run for six hours on the Revolt. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and pull the revitalizer leads off and check and see how it looks on the load tester. reading a good 13 volts and under load it's just above in the weak region now it's actually usable although it's not considered good so probably another four hour hit and it should be in the green zone so it's come back quite a ways it's actually a, a usable battery although I wouldn't want one in that condition my vehicle right now but if it comes back into the green zone then uh, we've made it all the way and it's a, a useful battery again Go ahead and hook it up and we'll run it this time for four hours. Alright, so here it is four hours later again. We're going to uh, check the load capability of the battery one more time. Showing into the 14 volt region now and loading down is holding in the green zone. So it actually made it into the it's considered good at this point, and uh, it's showing enough power to start a car. Now, until this battery has sat for a month and still shows that it's capable of starting a car, we don't really know if it will hold a charge for a long time, but if it is charged, it's capable of delivering enough current to start a vehicle at this point. 
and in an application where it's used constantly that still makes it quite usable.